when the heat cranks up here in New Orleans, we keep a very close eye on these dogs to make sure that nobody ever goes into any type of heat stress. A dog can die of heat stroke in a matter of minutes. So when I get a rescue call, it does become an immediate situation. We actually got a photo text message from a couple of really nice guys. They came across a small puppy cabled up to a fire hydrant. This is urgent. Get the bolt cutters, get something to cut this cable, and we need to go, we need to go, we need to go. I guess the situation is that it's cabled, so I don't think you can get the Holy. cable off the dog. Holy cow. In my experience as an animal cruelty investigator, I have seen heat stroke in, in animals before, and uh, it's not a pretty picture. A lot of people think they just pass out and go to sleep. They do not. Heat stroke causes the temperature of the brain to go up tremendously. They start to have seizures. In, in the situation this one's in now, he ain't got very long. I'm hoping we'll find a small, healthy puppy, and at the same time, I'm preparing myself for the worst, where the puppy is in a heat stroke and he's dying. In this heat, you know, don't have time. It's over 90 degrees here. Add to that the high humidity. Heat stroke is inevitable. There they are. That's them right there. Hey, buddy. Oh, oh, oh my God. God. Thank y'all for giving me water. Thank you, guys. All right, let's cut this thing off. This dog was very, very thin and very, very bad shape. But we have come across dogs that were left or chained up or tied up with at least a bowl of water and some food, um, which says that the owner kind of cared, but there was nothing. I mean, the only thing that I can say about the person who left this dog there is that they did it under the shade of a tree. I mean, <laughs> and I don't even know if that was on purpose. Hey, buddy. Wow. Well, yeah. Picking this little guy up in my arms, I immediately could feel his body temperature was pretty high. We need to get him into the car and get the air blowing on him, but that's when I noticed that the heat was not his only problem. Hey, look at this. These yeah, are ligature yeah. marks. Yeah. That's what, this is all ligature marks here. Like he was caught in something, like a, that cable. You see the ligature marks, and then you see the swelling of the leg. Oh my god, well let's get him back and get him some water and stuff. This means that this cable was tangled around this leg for a long period of time. No dog, especially a puppy, deserves this kind of treatment. Look at that. Dehydrated. One way that you can tell if a dog's dehydrated or not is we call it a skin pull. He's still real warm to touch. If you pull it up and the fold of skin stays up, that means there's no fluid in between the subcutaneous fat and the skin. So we've got to get this dog cooled off. We'll get you cooled off. We'll get you a bath, get you cooled off, get your body temperature down. The dog's body temperature still feels pretty high, so we're not gonna get out of the danger area until we really get his body temperature down. So okay. You're okay, little guy. You're okay. You're okay. Oh, oh. Okay, buddy. Pull you off. Pull you down. Oh, the water feels so good. Yeah. Okay, pull you down. This dog had such a crappy life before, and now all it takes to make him happy is a nice cool bath and just a little bit of care. I mean, come on. You gotta love that. It's probably a, a pit bull chihuahua mix. Oh, he's so bow-legged. Oh. This dog's back legs, they were so bowed out. Look at that. Oh, oh my god, look at that. He, he tried came, to scratch, he can't even. Yeah, he can't even balance, look at that. So we're um, gonna take him to the vet, we're gonna have his back legs checked out. He still needs to be neutered. Just wanna make sure that he's healthy. Oh, you poor thing. Oh my goodness, I feel so sorry for you. Okay. Hey, you're better now. We decided to name the new pup Gentilly after the street we found him on. After getting him cooled off a little bit and settled in, we're uh, now gonna take him to the vet to have him fully checked out. Where you going? Hold on there, little wild man. His legs are in pretty rough shape, so I'm hoping that Dr. Kristen can help him. We got a call that he was tied to a fire hydrant just left. Okay. This leg was super swollen, and then I noticed like the ligature, so probably the cable got tangled around him. Yeah. But obviously is the obvious, and that's his lovely back legs. <laughs> Yeah, and he's just altogether very tiny. Yes. You know, it's, it's, it would be so much easier if we knew, you know, the history yeah. behind it, too. It's always the hard part about the rescues because yeah. you don't know. He's very bow-legged in both hind legs, um, and he kind of has an unusual gait. 
doesn't really bend much at the knee at all. Lucky you didn't lose your leg. Yep, it was super swollen when we got him. And definitely, this is one of the worst cases I've ever seen. So I can feel his knee mm -hmm. all the way over here. He is actually a four out of four. Um, which means that when I straightened his leg out and tried to push that kneecap back to where it was supposed to be, it wouldn't go. Should we x-ray it? Yeah, we're going to x-ray it and see. Gentilly is still very young, and if not corrected, it's something that could possibly keep him from walking you know, properly as, as an adult dog. So I told you his kneecaps didn't feel mm -hmm. like you see the kneecap right here. It should be right here. <gasps> oh my god. You see it? It's like yeah, on the it's like somewhere else. So you can imagine your kneecap on the inside, you trying to walk, it'll make you bow legged. Like, is that like a luxating patella? Yep, okay. exactly. And this is medial or to the inside, medial luxating. What happens is, is that the kneecap is not aligned with your thigh muscles. And so every time you try and bend your leg, that kneecap will pop to the inside. So we wanted to go ahead and try and get him some help. Is it like a pretty intense? Surgery? Yeah, I mean, I'll keep him and I'll do one knee and neuter him, and then you can come back in a month or two and we'll do the other knee. I'm relieved to hear that Gentilly's problem is correctable. Uh, yeah, well, we'll leave him here to have the surgery. He's already had such a rough life at such a young age, so we can't wait to get it started and get him through his first leg of surgery. Though it's a long process, it is one step closer to him getting better and to getting a home of his own. Gentilly to the vet, Dr. Kristen operated on one leg at a time. So today we're going back to see how he's doing and hopefully be able to bring him back here to the rescue to help him get through his healing process. Oh, little one. Um, so Dr. Kristen said we're doing adequate injections twice a week, can rest for a month, strict. Wow. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh no. It's not his favorite thing. Gentilly's surgery went really well but now we're gonna have to keep him on very restricted exercise. So he can go out, obviously, to go pee and mm -hmm. all that stuff. After he heals up on the first surgery, then it's on to the second leg. So he's only halfway home. Thank you, guys. See you later, I'm sure. It's just amazing how dogs in general, I think, bounce back, you know, with just a minimal amount of compassion. Don't go fast, okay? Go fast. Oh. You know, this little guy was hours away from dying of heat stroke, extremely emaciated, you know, an injured leg. Oh, you fall down. You fall down. But he's just like, ah, life is good. I'm happy now. You got someone who cares about me. Very forgiving. Dogs are so forgiving. Ready? Ready? So the next step for Gentility is um, to heal. OK, it's a crate rest only. We're talking probably a good three months before he's ready for adoption. All right, buddy, let's go back. <laughs>